we're going to start PVA off with the original funnel web system. If you've never seen it before, or you've never fished with it before, where have you been? Have you never seen a magazine or seen a TV show about fishing or anything? Because it's everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And what we're going to do here is show you how easy it is to tie a bag and give you some good little tips on how to get more from the system. But first of all, this is why I use PVA. Right, we get two hook baits, okay? Consider they're both hook baits. Which one of those two is more attractive to the carp? Thought about it? It's got to be that one, hasn't it? It can't be that one on its own. They're both just as good as a hook bait, but that one's got another little pile of food around it. And that's why I use PVA all the time. There are three different systems. They do three completely different jobs. So let's have a look at the funnel web system first of all. For those of you that haven't seen the system before, it comes in a protective plastic tube. It's actually got a diagram on the outside of how to do it. Just take the inner tube out, and on that is five metres of PVA stocking with a knot tied in the end there. You're probably going to guess how I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to bring my pellet mix in. I've got three different kinds of pellet in there. I've got some bloodworm pellets from Mainline, some response pellets from Mainline, and some halibut pellets from Bait Tech. And the reason I've got three different kinds of pellets is they all fly up into the fish's mouth at different rates, so it's got to keep sucking to get the whole lot there, and then hopefully the hook bait's going to go in as well. And they've all got different breakdown times, so you're going to get a leakage of attraction coming off them pellets at different rates. So. Just a tiny, tiny amount of going down. Now that's, now that's a major thing that people do wrong with PVA, is they use far too many pellets in the bag. You're just trying to hook them, you're not trying to feed them. So that is the maximum that I'll use in one of these kind of bags. Just pour it down there. Let some drop down. And that's the thing that a lot of people do wrong. They don't let enough PVA off the end of the tube. So that's already, that bag's starting to form already. And then I'll do a simple overhand knot, like a simple granny knot. You see the knot there? and then I'll hold the bag at the very top and then pull the knot down onto the top of the bag. So I've got a nice tight bag there. And you probably guess what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna do another simple overhand knot. You see that knot there? And then I'm gonna pull that knot down so it's close to the first one. And then I cut between the two. That's your bag done. And then your system is ready for another go. And it is as simple as that put that back in the tube and then hooking it on I've got a little tiny pellet a 10 mil pellet on the rig there and that's another great tip the smaller the size of the stuff in the bag the smaller your hook bait should be the worst thing you can do is use little tiny dust pellets even smaller than the ones I'm using today and then couple that with a 20 mil boilie because those fish are feeding on those little pellets and when they suck that boilie and it doesn't go up in their mouth because it's miles heavier they can leave it so keep your hook bait similar, just hook that on so you can see. That's just hooked through the side of the bag, away from the knot, because the knot is the last thing to melt, and that's ready to go. Just cast it out like that, and you're away. The other advantage of using bags this size is they cast really easily, and because they only take a few seconds to make up, if you cast them in the wrong spot, which we all do, it's simple enough to wind it in, make another bag, and cast it out again. And if you spent 10 minutes making a solid PVA bag, which is huge and difficult to cast, and then you get that in the wrong spot, there's less likelihood you're going to wind it in because it's such a pain to do another one. So if you've used funnel web quite a bit, there's a few little tips I can give you for spicing up your mix a little bit. So we put that down, and we show you the mix again. So we've got a nice mix of pellets, and there's a few liquids that you can actually put in them. First of all, the pellet syrups. They're really, really good. You can just pour them straight onto them. Just chuck that on there. You can't overdo these, completely impossible to overdo them. And I'm gonna use my compressor stick just to mix that in. That's the halibut one. Doesn't melt PVA. And just spices them up. You can really smell that halibut smell. Fish absolutely love fish oils and fishy smells. And that's just spice that up straight away. Just one little thing like that can get you extra bites. There's another couple of things that you can add to the pellets as well to spice them up a little bit. The hook bait dip for one that you put on the boilies normally, a little dribble of that on top is gonna to add pulling power. And also foss oil, which is a really thick fish oil. In the summer it's brilliant, in the winter it's no good because it congeals, but fish absolutely love fish oil. A little dribble of that on your pellets will add pulling power as well. Now when you've used the system up, there are two refills. 
That's the one that comes on the system, the three season refill. That'll still melt in about a minute and a half, even in the winter, because we've reduced the amount of PVA in it recently to bring the melt time down as low as humanly possible. And then there's a four season refill as well, which is a micro mesh. So the holes are even smaller than the one you've just seen. So you can get tiny, tiny dust pellets in, and most importantly, maggots. Maggots are brilliant in a funnel web system. If you couple it with a few maggots on a maggot clip, especially in the winter, you can get bites when nothing else is working.